What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In the last D100 video, I did some work to the lower control arms in order to get more drop in the front end of that truck. While I was under there, I decided I needed to take care of a few often overlooked suspension items. Since I had both front lower control arms out to get modified, I had to remove or I had to unbolt the strut rods from the control arms. So since the strut rods were already halfway out, I figured I would go ahead and replace the rubber that there the rubber mount or the, the rubber bushings at the frame side mount, plus on the side where the sway bar mounts to the front strut rods. Well, since I was going to be doing that part of the sway bar, I figured I might as well go ahead and replace the frame mounts for the sway bars too. So let me get the truck up in the air and I'll give you a little bit closer look at what's going on. So when people talk about suspension, they often talk about, you know, the springs and the shocks. But often things like the sway bar mounts or the sway bar end links, or in the case of these old trucks, the strut rods, things like that often get overlooked. So when I was underneath this thing doing the front lower control arms, I noticed that pretty much the rubber mounts for like where the sway bar mounts to the strut rods or even the sway bar frame mounts, all those rubber bushings were pretty much gone. So I decided to replace them with poly mounts. So in order to replace all the rubber mounts under the truck, I went with a set of energy suspension uh, polyurethane mounts. And this set had the sway bar frame mounts, which I'll show you in a second. And along with the polyurethane mounts for where the sway bar attaches to the strut rod. And then I went with uh, prothane uh, those are also polyurethane bushings and they are for the ends of the strut rods. So here you can see the energy suspension frame mounts for the front sway bar. Now, a couple of nice things about this set is the polyurethane bushing here, I don't know how well you can see this, is actually split. So getting that over the sway bar was nice and easy, unlike the mount that goes on the, uh, the strut rod, which I'll show you that one in a second. That one was a pain. Another nice thing is these frame mounts actually have Zerk fittings in them. So it makes greasing the polyurethane bushing nice and easy. I thought that was pretty neat. That's pretty neat. And then here you can see that energy suspension polyurethane mount for the, so this actually clamps onto there. And this is for the sway bar mount to go here. Now this one was a pain. I had to actually put the strut rod in my vise, my bench vise, and pound this thing from the end all the way down. So I ended up using actually a larger dead blow than that to get that thing in place. And that was a pain. Um, hopefully, and I even lubed it up. So hopefully once I get the mount on here, if I need to turn this thing at all, it'll rotate easier on the rod. But I need to still swap out the rubber mounts on the ends of the strut rod with the prothane set. So I'm going to do that right now. It's nice. That's quick and easy. The, the ends just come off, put on the new bushings. Those don't actually look too bad, but I figured since I had the, the strut rod halfway out, I might as well go ahead and take care of that too with some nice poly bushings. Okay, a couple of things. First, I just found out that you don't wanna have the weight of the vehicle on the suspension when trying to reconnect your front strut rods. Um, I had the weight 
on a jack stand underneath the lower control arm for reasons that I will get into later. But what that did was it knocked my lower control arm just a bit out of alignment and I wasn't able to align, to line up the bolts through the strut rod into the control arm. So I had to reposition jack stands under the frame, get the weight off the suspension. That's number one, live and learn. Learn from my mistakes, kids. And secondly, hopefully it's bright enough that you can see this. This is the nut that goes on the end of the strut rod. The strut rod goes back to the control arm. This nut gets bolted or torqued down to 50 foot pounds. There's also a hole for like a cotter pin through there. So once I get that torqued down, I will put a cotter pin in that, in the uh, end of the strut rod. Now that I got the strut rods back in, and like I said, the nut that goes on the end of the strut rod, the frame side mount, that gets torqued to 50 foot pounds. And then the two bolts that go through the strut rod into the lower control arm, those get torqued to 85 foot pounds. But with the strut rods back in place, I was able to remount the sway bar. Now the sway bar end links that connect to that bushing on the end of the strut rod, that was a lot more difficult than what it needed to be. So here you can see on this, now this is the control arm that I took out of the truck and these are stock van series control arms. You can see right here, I had to clearance this part of this flange out for that sway bar end link bushing. Everything kind of sat right here, so I had to clearance that due to interference. Now, because I modified this spring pocket and drop this even more, that, that still changed the relation of the lower control arm as far as how it sits and where that bushing landed. So I tried to clearance this area out enough due to that new position of that uh, sway bar end link, but I wasn't able to. I would have had to clearance probably some of the vertical surface here, and I really didn't want to get into this area of the lower control arms. So what I ended up doing was the frame mounts that are for the, that go on the front of the sway bar. I ended up moving those forward about half an inch and that fixed all of my, my clearance issues. So now on to the reason why I originally had the weight of the truck sitting on jack stands under the control arms. And that is because I have to replace my steering box. So when I got done modifying the passenger side lower control arm and got everything reinstalled, I wanted to obviously check everything for clearance. I wanted to make sure you know steering was good before I assembled the driver side. So I was sitting here in the truck, didn't have the engine running, didn't have the vehicle jacked up or anything, and I was turning the wheel to the right, checking for clearance, and I got near the end and I heard and felt a pop. It's like, all right, what the hell was that? Got out of the truck, looked around, didn't see anything. Turned the wheel to the left, to the lock, no problem. Was coming back to the right, and again, I heard and felt a pop in the wheel. And so I got out again to investigate and started to notice power steering fluid coming out of the cap of my pump. So I immediately thought, well, that's not good. Looks like I'm replacing my steering gear. So there it is. I started opening it up thinking I might rebuild it, but then I thought, well, I guess I'll just install another one. I may end up rebuilding that one, but I've never done it. And I feel better just installing a new one, reconditioned. So I found that when messing with these steering gears, steering boxes, whatever, that it's often helpful to have a second set of hands. I mean, these things are heavy, they're awkward, and it could just be a real pain trying to get bolt holes lined up, but I'm often working by myself. So what I find helps, I took a bolt, same size as the threads of the steering gear, just longer, cut the head off, and this will act as a third hand to help hold this thing in place so I can Take this, can drop it down into the into the hole. Try to anyway. Try to get this thing down in place. There we go. 
line up that cutoff bolt with one of the bolt holes. And now that'll hold me in place, lined up, that I can start an actual bolt. All right, so apparently I've lost some footage, but no big deal. So steering gearbox is in, pitman arm is on, the center link is attached to the pitman arm, and that nut has been torqued to 65 foot-pounds, cotter pins installed. I haven't torqued the center nut for the pitman arm yet on the gearbox, on the steering box. Uh, I don't have a torque wrench that goes to 185 foot-pounds, nor do I have a socket that I think is like, it's like an inch and five sixteenths or something. So I'll probably just put a adjustable wrench on there and a homemade breaker bar, a pipe, and tighten that thing down to like 10 ooga doogas, whatever. I'll figure something out. Uh, so the next will be to do connect the steering shaft to the gearbox. So right now I've got the rag joint connected to the gearbox. Now I just got to connect the intermediate shaft between the steering wheel and the gearbox. Now, I know someone out there is going to say, well, why don't you connect the rag gear to the steering box before you, and then line up the mid shaft to the, to the rag gear when you were connecting the steering box to the frame and blah, blah, blah. Look. I wasn't going to get a hernia trying to manipulate that steering gear around and line up the mid shaft and everything like that. Me, I'll just loosen the four bolts to hold the steering wheel in or the steering column, slide that back a little bit, give me some clearance to connect the mid shaft up. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Now that everything is put back together, the only thing left to do is to fill the power steering pump, start the truck, cycle the steering, lock the lock a few times, make sure the system bleeds, top off the fluid as it's needed, and then we should be good to go. Now my problem is, as you can see, my battery's dead. Hot rod things, huh? So, appreciate you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll see you on the next one.